Beautiful, guys. We're almost done with our application. And the last thing that's missing is the ability for the user to search for specific recipes, because at the moment we have the search bar. Everything is working fine. It's even hooked up to the state. But as we're clicking submit, obviously nothing is happening. Now, let me show you how this is going to look like. So if I'm going to go to an inspect, then we can go to react tools. And then within the react tools, we're going to be looking for recipes. So we're going to be looking at recipes. That's going to be our uh, choice. And then let's say, OK, so this is going to be state. No, this is what I'm looking for. And as you notice, within the recipes, I do have the search property in the state. Here it is. And then if I'm going to start typing something, obviously, this is going to be displayed in the state. We already knew that because we hooked it up in a state. Remember, this was hooked up over here. And then we passed it down to a search component by the prop of search. All right. Well, the point here is this. Why don't we have a look in the food to fork how they would want us to structure the URL? And then we're going to figure out what kind of changes we're going to have to make to our application. So first and foremost, we're going to head over back to food to fork. And then this would be the example that they give you. I'm just going to copy and paste the example. We're going to copy and paste it in the browser. Then I'm going to get my key. You obviously don't need to use your API calls. You can just have a look how this is going to happen. I will going to replace my key like so, as well as I'm going to get rid of these percentages and all that. And I'm just going to say that I'm going to be looking for chicken, let's say. Now, the moment I press enter, these are my recipes that I'm getting. Awesome. Well, what else I can be looking for? Well, I can just say, okay, I'm just going to have a comma and then we're going to be looking for beef. Now, in this case, I'm looking for recipes with chicken as well as with the beef. Once I know this information, why don't we go back and all the time I keep looking for the left one because that's how it used to be. And now I obviously changed the browser windows. So my apologies for swinging all the time back to the desktop. But my idea is very simple. So at the moment, I do have the URL and then the URL is pointing to the correct food to fork. And in that case, I'm getting the most 30 popular recipes. However, I'm obviously using this get recipes function and I'm passing this this dot state URL into the function. And my idea would be very simple. I would like to create more properties. First one is going to be base URL as well as I would like to set up the query. And then as I'm going to be submitting my search results, this is where I'm going to be looking for connecting them all. And the way this is going to work, let's say there's going to be some kind of query that I'm writing here. And then once I'm going to submit it, I'm just going to create this URL where I have the search. So that would be my base one. Then I'm going to add, obviously, my API key. Then we're going to add this and and Q which we're going to need for query. And this is going to be our query result. As always, I think it's just going to be a little bit easier if we're going to start working on that. So like I said, first and foremost, in my state, I would like to set up more properties, more values here. And the first one is going to be base URL, base URL. Again, you can call this however you'd like, as long as you have the same information here. So base URL is going to be actually exactly the same like the URL. And you'll see in a second why we need that. So I'm going to say, OK, so this is going to be my base URL. Then I also said that I would want to set up the query. So I'm going to write query and let me add comma because at the moment comma is missing. And for the query, we're going to write a simple string where we're going to have the and and then Q as well as the equal sign. That's going to be our query. And last but not least, we're going to have the error. At the moment, error is not going to make any sense, and this is just going to be an empty string. But later on, as we start structuring the queries, you'll see why we have the error. That would be my basic setup for the state. And as you can see, I'm working with, again, the environment variable for that. In that case, this allows me to kind of save on showing, obviously, my API key. First and foremost, we have the state setup. Awesome. Well, then we obviously have the handle submit which at the moment is just preventing the default behavior. However, what we can do is we can say, okay, const, then we're going to look for base URL. Then we are also going to have the query from the state as well as the search. And you already probably can see what we're doing. So we're structuring this together. So I'm going to say, okay, I would like to get all these values from the state. And obviously the only one that's going to be changing 
as we're running the handle change is going to be the search. And then we're just going to structure it. Then we're going to say that within a state. So we're going to use this dot set state, and then we're going to change the URL in the actual state. Now, why we are changing the URL property in the state? Well, it's actually very simple. Look at this get recipes. What is this get recipes using? Well, it is using the URL. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my base URL. I'm going to get the query as well as I'm going to get the search what the user is searching for. And then I'm going to replace this URL with my search query. That is my basic idea behind this. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say, OK, so there's going to be a state. Now, the URL in this case, since we're using this dot set state is going to be a little bit different. We are going to use all the variables. So first of all, I'm going to say, OK, base URL is going to be my first one that I'm going to replace. Then the second one is going to be my query. Now, query is, again, just a simple string with and Q and equal sign. So that is going to be my variable that I'm getting from the state, as well as the last one is going to be the search. Now, search is the dynamic one. And that's obviously the one that's changing. That's the reason why we're setting this URL. As well as the last thing, I would like to set search to an equal string, meaning to an empty string, where, again, the user can start typing everything from scratch. So we will not going to use the old search results. We were going to clear the input. That way, if the user types some kind of search, even though the search wasn't right or something like that, then we clean up the input and then we have the fresh new start. All right. At the moment, we have changed here the URL. But what we would need to do is we would need to call the function of get recipes because the get recipes is using the state dot URL. And this is going to work in our callback function. So I'm going to say, all right, so I changed the state values, but I know that I have the callback function, which we're going to actually invoke right after I have set up the state. And in this case, I'm going to say that I would like to call this dot get recipes because that is the method that I'm using to actually make a Ajax request. Let's see. All right. So first of all, let's save it. And then I will going to head over to a bigger browser window because I think it's going to be easier to see. We might as well can maybe leave the react tools open. And in this case, this is just going to give me a new one. Now I didn't want that. Let's say browser router router. Again, I'm just going to navigate to my recipes. This is going to be my recipes and this is going to be my recipes page. And then within my recipes, I should be having my query. And as you can see, this is where I'm going to be typing. So let's say I'm going to be looking for the beef. And the moment we're going to click on submit, we should be getting the beef recipes in this case, because now we set up a new array. And notice now the search is also going to be empty. And what we're doing is all right. So we have the state within the state. We have the URL that's just getting all of them. However, in our case, what we are having is also base URL with the query as well as the search. So if I typed, let's say beef in our case, I did set up with handle submit where I had the base URL, then I grabbed the query and then I had also the beef, the one that we searched for. We grab all these values from the state and then we again change the value from the actual URL. The reason why we change the value for the URL is because we're using it within the get recipes. And that is the reason why we had to structure our Ajax calls a little bit different than what we previously did on a single recipe. Because in this case, I do want to make it functional where I have two options. Either I'm just showing by default whatever values I'm getting, so the most popular recipes, or I'm showing the more specific ones, the ones that user is searching for. However, there is also a little bit of kicker. Because let's imagine that the user is searching for a recipe that does not exist. So at the moment, I can see that, OK, so I have a query, I have recipes, everything is working really well. But also, I have an option of obviously searching for something that doesn't exist. So let's say in my search query, I write React, and then we're going to click. And what I see here is that I'm getting back the array with zero, because obviously there is no recipes that show the React kind of ingredients, right? Those recipes don't exist. So we also would need to set up some kind of way where we can check for that. And the best way would be actually in the Ajax request. And we can do it right here in our JSON data. 
And just to show you how this is gonna work if we're returning the empty JSON data, let's look. So let's I'm gonna say a console log JSON data. And let's see what is gonna be returned if we're gonna be looking for, let's say, React. I'm gonna press on React, then we're gonna look for inspect, and we should have here in the console the object. And why don't we have a look what we have in the object? What is missing when we have the React in our search query? Well, what we're having is recipes. Recipes is an array, but this is an empty array. So why don't we check? Why don't we say, okay, if the recipes that we're getting back is an empty array, I would like to set up some kind of error here. And the error is going to be displayed. So the user understands that there's no search results that matched whatever he was searching for. And the way we're going to do that, we're not just going to say, okay, this that's its state. We, in fact, can first check. So I'm going to say if dot JSON data, then we have recipes. Then obviously this recipes is going to be array. So we can check the length. We can say length and let's say something like this. And then we're going to check if this is going to be zero. Then we would want to actually set up the error in the state. So that way we're going to say, okay, this dot set state. And then obviously this is going to be an object. And we're going to write something in there. Not empty error, obviously, that one we have right now in a state, but we're actually going to add the message. I'm going to say, sorry, but your uh, search, but your, uh, your search, search did not return, return, let me write this correctly, return any recipes, any recipes, as well as we're going to say, please uh, try again. And then we're going to say or uh, press search, search icon uh, for the most popular recipes, for the most popular recipes. And the way this is going to work, if the user, let's say, just wants to get back the most popular recipes, the user just needs to click on the icon. That's all. And then we'll have the for the most popular, popular recipes. So would, that would be the case if we're getting, obviously, an error if this would be an empty array. However, obviously, we're going to have the case where everything is successful, where we are getting our recipes. So in that case, we can just say else, else if everything is true, we will going to run this that set state. So let me grab the state. In this case, we will going to set up our recipes in a state. However, what's also necessary is to set up again this error to zero or empty string. Because in that case, if we're going to search for something, we will going to get the error. We would also want to make sure that if the actual search was successful right after the error, the error is going to be empty. Otherwise, obviously, the error message is going to be displayed. And at the moment, we're not displaying that message. As you can see, we're only changing the value in the state. So why don't we also set up the conditional rendering in our JSX? Because at the moment, we're just displaying recipes list. But why don't we say, OK, if there's going to be an error, then I would like to have a different rendering option. And in this case, again, we know that we can use JavaScript. So I'm going to say this dot state, then we're going to be looking for the error. Then I'm also going to have the ternary operator. And then I'm going to have two options. Well, the first one is going to be the error. And the second one is if everything is successful, I'm just going to grab my recipes. So I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to copy and paste them right here. And then the first one is going to be if I have my obviously the error and this is not working the way I want it to. So let me have the section instead. And now within a section, let's just write some kind of error message. So that way, if there's going to be an error, because again, we're just checking the value in the state. If the state is going to be empty string, this is not going to work, meaning this is going to be false. And if this is going to be false, then our recipes are going to be displayed. If the value is going to be there, if it's going to be more than an empty string, then this will be true. And that way, we're going to be displaying our error message. And that's the reason why we're setting up again back in a state error to the empty one. Because right after a user, let's say, has failed in a search, we would still want the option where if the search is correct, then the proper recipes are being displayed. All right, our last thing is going to be here looking for the row. Then within the row, we're going to have some kind of column. And you know what? What we would want in a column is going to be heading to. 
And let's just add a bunch of class names here. Text orange is going to be my first one. Then we're going to have text center text upper case. And then we'll have margin top will be five. And then let's write that we would like to display the message from the state and the message is going to be error. So this dot state error. And that's going to be my message that I'm going to be using. I will going to save this at the moment, but I want to test it out again in the bigger screen because I think it will going to just look much better. So let's say we have the recipes and everything is working really well, but the user decides that he or she is going to look for react. We should get the error. So we have sorry, but your search did not return any recipes. Please try again. And in this case, we have two options. Either we search for a recipe that does exist. So let's say onion. And then we're going to get everything that has to do with recipes with onions. Or we can just press the space bar. Or not the space bar, sorry, the search bar. Because at the moment, again, you have the sorry, your search that did not return any results. But what we can do is we can press on the icon. And then we're going to get, again, the most popular recipes. And yeah, that should do it for our application. Again, I will going to go over one more time why we're setting up the submit. And again, the reason for that was very simple. The base URL was used to grab everything that they were looking for in the actual search. So remember, the search, you can look at it, was from three values. So you can say, okay, so the first one was the API key. Then we had our little query here. And then we had what we were searching for. So we set up this one as the base URL, everything, including the API key. Then we also use the query like so. And then I'm sorry. Yeah, this was including the actual equal sign and then whatever we were searching for. So in our case, we did the same thing in a state. We said, OK, so this is going to be my base URL with an API key. This is going to be my query. And last but not least, this is dynamic search that the user is performing. And then since the get recipes is going to use the value from the state, that's the reason within submit when we grabbed all these values from the state. And by the way, these two are not going to be changing. Only the search is going to be changing. And then once we are setting up the state with this dot set state in the callback function, we just run the method that we had in order to perform the search. So that was the basic logic behind this. And hopefully, guys, everything worked out really well. Hopefully you got the application and I hope you're going to join me on the next project.